Uh, but anyway, we got Tanya joining us. It's Friday. Do you do you keep up with basketball at all? Only if one of my teams is in it. So who's your team I, in I'm basketball? In uh, Mississippi State. Oh, okay, like so, our team. So, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when's the last time they've made it to like that far into the tournament? Gosh, it seems like it's been a while. Yeah, um, probably so. Well, you've had a busy week. I have. I'm still recovering. From the Oscars. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know you joined Dave. I was super jealous to give an Oscars update, but that's okay. Was it everything you needed it to be and more? It really was. I was very happy. You know, um, I, I really thought the ceremony was great. I was actually just listening uh, earlier today to a podcast giving an Oscar wrap up and they said that it the numbers are up so that's good that people are were tuning in and I'm sure it's because Top Gun and Avatar you know movies that people actually go see were nominated um, but they but, didn't yeah. stand a chance yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you know the thing I love best is it seems like all the people that usually aren't invited to the party were invited and they won. So yeah. that was kind of fun. So what was it like for you to see Jamie Lee Curtis win? I was really excited. I mean, I I, I wanted Angela Bassett, but it, it's another one of those, like the Austin Butler, Brendan Fraser uh, comp- matchup or whatever you want to call it. There wasn't a bad option. Right. It's like you can't not root for both of them. You know, you have your favorite, but it's okay if yeah. they don't win. And who doesn't love Jamie Lee and his her speeches are so good that you know it's worth her winning um, anything just to be able to hear her talk my favorite thing about her and I was just thinking about it and actually laughing out loud I thought if anybody walks by my office they're going to think I'm crazy but Saturday night on SNL they did an impression of her walking the red carpet and it was so funny and I keep thinking about it and I mean it was spot on. I, I appreciate she doesn't take herself too seriously. Yeah. And she's very relatable. And it, you know, I'm sure she's lived a very privileged life with both of her parents being actors and all of that. But she seems to have stayed as down to earth as humanly possible. Yeah, I think so, too. And I think realm. even though her parents had a lot of drama, well, I guess probably more her dad than her mother, um, I think they raised her right. I mean, I think they really raised grounded kids. All right, so the movies. What's coming out now that would be an Oscar season for 2024? Yeah, well, I don't know if we have any Oscar contenders out this weekend. <laughs> but there are a couple of fun things, and I, one I did get to see. Um, but before I get to that one, A Snowy Day in Oakland. Uh, I had not heard anything about this, but the cast just knocks my socks off. Evan Ross, who is... Um, Diana's son, um, who's a great actor. Loretta Devine, she's one of those that does no wrong. Dion Cole from Blackish, to me, he was the standout character on that TV series. Marla Gibbs from The Jeffersons. So a great cast. The name of the movie is A Snowy Day in Oakland. I think I may have already said that. It's PG-13. It's the story of a psychologist who lives in San Francisco. She decides it's time to end things with her um, psychologist boyfriend who's a bit of a celebrity and she goes across the bay and opens up shop in Oakland in a little empty space kind of in the middle of everything um, and the neighborhood is kind of thrown for a loop because it's predominantly a black neighborhood and um, they don't know what to do with her <laughs> So anyway, that, that's kind of the premise of it. It looks really, really cute. And I mean, the cast in, alone is worth watching it. I'm, I feel like it's going to be a good one and I'm going to watch it. I just didn't get to it this weekend. Uh, but the big one this weekend is Shazam, Fury of the Gods. And um, this one, I loved it. I thought it was so good. And to me, this one, you know, this is supposed to mark the ending of the current DC era and we've got a new guy that has come in James Gunn um, who is going to kind of relaunch the DC family and try to kind of put it on the same level as what we're seeing from Marvel but to me I felt like this movie was kind of a taste of what's to come even though it's really not part of this relaunch but okay so the first Shazam you know, you've got Zachary Levi that plays the character. 
um, who says Shazam, and he transforms from a little boy to this guy, adult, but he's still a little boy in an adult body, and it is, I mean, he is so adorable that, and so believable, it's like, I can't imagine any other actor pulling it off like he does, he does such a good job, Um, but in addition to him, in this one, we've added Helen Mirren, who does no wrong, I love her, Uh, Lucy Liu is in it along with all of the folks that we met in the first movie. So if you've missed the first one, don't worry, because it starts off with um, the Billy Batson is the little boy's name. He is appears as um, the superhero who still doesn't really have a name um, on a couch talking to his psychiatrist and who we find out is really his pediatrician because you know, and the and the guy's really confused because he sees this adult has no idea that it's really his pediatric patient, um, and he tells you everything that's happened to that point. So if you did not see the first one, he's going to catch you up right then and there. But in this one, you know, the first one we know Billy is a a kid who's looking for his mother. He's been in all these foster homes and spent all of his life to this point running away trying to find his mother he finally finds her finds out she lost him on purpose it was really sad um and so we saw him kind of come to terms with accepting hey i'm a foster kid and this is my foster family and i'm going to embrace this so we've gone from that to now he is kind of on the other side of it. He's embracing the family too much, and he's very clingy. He's about to turn 18, and he's worried that he's about to get kicked out because he's going to age out of the foster system. And he knows his family's struggling financially, and he's thinking, they're going to they're gonna boot me because they can't afford to keep me. So that's kind of where his mind is. He thinks, why am I here? Why did I get chosen to be the superhero, um, and so he doesn't feel worthy. There's a lot of cute little little things that happen, and um, I, I saw it yesterday, and I got home, and, and I was trying to tell my husband. I was like, I can't talk to you about it without spoiling some things because my favorite parts of this movie were things I had no clue were coming. Uh, but there is two post-credit, well, mid-credit, post-credit scene, just like we're seeing from Marvel they're both worth sticking around for. So um, kind of like what I've been suggesting on the Marvel movies. If you've really got to go to the bathroom, stay, watch that mid credit scene, run to the restroom, come back. you got time. you got time to do it. It yeah. looks like the comedy is on point just by the, it the commercials. It is. Yeah. I just feel like they do a really good job. And honestly, some of the reviews I'm seeing aren't great. And I'm like, I don't know what they're missing because I thought it was a really good. I liked it better than I liked the first one. Is there anything else that's going up against it? Um, no. I mean, I don't know that it's going to come out on top just because you still have Creed out there. You still have Scream 6. You've got Ant-Man still. Um, I hope it is number one, but uh, that it is number one, but it's not looking like it's going to perform as well as how you see doing. yeah it, and you know this one of course has a bigger budget than scream and so we'll see but i thought it's definitely worth seeing and, and i do want to say it's pg-13 um to be what i would think would be kind of a family uh demographic kind of a movie it has got some scary stuff in there so i definitely would not take my little ones and if you saw the first one the scene in the conference room was one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen in my life. And there's a similar kind of scene in this one. So it's more of the, I guess, the scary, that kind of thing, not so much language or right or that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fun to say. All right, you guys stick with us again.